Behold, he cometh with clouds, and every eye shall see him, and they also which pierced him, and all kindreds of the earth shall wail because of him. As birds flying, so will the Lord of hosts defend Jerusalem. Defending also, he will deliver it, and passing over, he will preserve it. For as the lightning cometh out of the east, and shineth even unto the west, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. For behold, the Lord will come with fire, and with his chariots like a whirlwind, to render his anger with fury, and his rebuke with flames of fire. For by fire and by his sword will the Lord plead with all flesh, and the slain of the Lord shall be many. Hosea chapter 5 and verse 14. For I will be unto Ephraim as a lion, and as a young lion to the house of Judah. I, even I, will tear and go away. I will take away, and none shall rescue him. I will go and return to my place, till they acknowledge their offense, and seek my face. In their affliction, they will seek me early. Shalom, brothers and sisters. This is your brother, Howie Allah. I want to give all glory and praises to our Heavenly Father, Yahweh, And we do so in the name of our Lord and Savior, Yahweh Shai. Grace and mercy be abound to the hopeful elect scattered throughout the four corners of the earth that are waiting on the second coming of our Lord and Savior, Yahweh Shai, Hamashiach. Tonight, we're going into the story concerning uh, the police brutality case of uh, Sonia Massey. And, you know, some of the information that has come out over the last few days uh, concerning it, as you know, that you've probably been seeing a lot of uh, press work with Benjamin Crump and the family. And, uh, you know, basically it's the same old story that we've seen over the years. And um, as far as, you know, if this is going to change, this is never going to change. And this is one of the reasons why, you know, all these people that are roused up over this whole election issue. It's like these people are living in Groundhog Day over and over again. I mean, we've been this has been happening over and over again where not too long or around the time of the election or re-election, um, it's a police brutality case that kind of goes national, okay? Uh, same thing happened during the time of uh, the George Floyd case and uh, that whole situation, you know, led right into the, the election, okay? And that's part of the reason why you know, we keep on trying to figure out what's going on. It's just Groundhog's Day over and over again. And unfortunately, be due to, you know, our uh, disobedience and our rebellion against the Most High and the, what our forefathers have done, which has led us all the way to the uttermost part of the earth out of the lands where we're calling ourselves black. You know, even even we, when we have to converse with people, whether, you know, in person or on, online, we have to use words like black because going into this whole spiel of we're Israelites is really hard enough because most of our people are just ain't going to understand and a lot of people are going to stay in this darkness until you know the coming of the end and so what I'm going to do I'm just going to actually show you the video of the um, interaction leading up to her you know of course becoming a victim and you know this is where this whole you got these people on the right even so-called black people with this internalized racism this um weird thing you know me and brothers have been talking about this weird movement of you know so-called black people that are now internalizing their own oppression to where they're thinking like the oppressor to where they're denying racism they're saying stop being a victim um, stop claiming that you're a victim of anything in America. Stop claiming racism. Stop claiming talking about anything that's happening in the past, present. Uh, talk talking about the future plans of your own, you know, destruction. Just deny it altogether, and let's just basically be Americans. So you got some sick people uh, that are among us that are bringing in these demonic um, talking points to, you know, basically orchestrate their own demise okay essentially at this point you know satan has completely blinded him so much that he's actually given them a, a, their own rope okay to put around their own neck and to stand on a chair until they decide to kick the chair out from underneath them and that's where we've gotten to at this point with uh, with a good chunk of our people but there's still a chunk of our people that are still you know understand uh that we are victims of a wicked oppressive system and it is not going to end um, unless 
we figure out why we're in the condition we're in and what the solution is for us to get around out of it. And it's not going to be voting. And a lot of our people do not want to hear that voting is not going to save them. OK, they do not want to hear that. That is the worst thing you can say to them. And those type of people, they're the reason why they're going to continue to stick into this cycle of over and over again. They're able to use the same trick on you to keep you, you know, in this perpetual state of confusion. OK, and in each generation, they're morally degradating you down to an animal. OK, to worse than an animal, because at least animals have some level of instinct of survival you know every living creature has the desire to, sur to survive they do everything within their ability innately given to them to try and ensure the survival of their own species the only people that don't do that are the israelites the people that are descendants of jacob they're the only people that do not go out of their way to figure out how they can survive and we've been given the blueprint we've been given the option to choose life or to choose death and it's very clear that our people are choosing death and it continues to chase and hunt them down so let's go into this uh, video okay and so as you see here we have the video and uh, before we play it just to give you a backdrop of what happened the the sister uh, Sonia Massey was at her home and she had, I guess, a feeling that an intruder or somebody was trying to possibly, you know, uh, break into her home and it caused her to call the cops uh, and the police came. And that's where you see that they're inside and they're basically there. I guess they already had checked the perimeter. They came inside to talk to her. And I guess possibly a lot of times what they'll do with these checks is they'll see whether or not somebody maybe is you know um, has any mental instability as to why they called now we don't know whether or not she's called them multiple times before we don't know if this is the first time this is all information that we will not know unless they ever release it to the public or if it ever comes out in some kind of a trial or a case okay um now the sister sonia is actually about 36 years old and uh you know this is where she lives this again this is in springfield uh illinois okay so I'm gonna go ahead and play it, and we're going to uh, kind of stop and do kind of a play-by-play -play leading into, you know, the her, um, I guess you could say her public, you know, on display for the world to see, you know, um, deletion. I'm gonna just put it like that because we can't say certain words on uh, YouTube. Yeah, you have an idea that makes things so much easier. I just, just driver's license will do, and I'll get out of your hair. I want to show y'all my paperwork. I will what? get your paperwork. What paperwork? I got some paperwork. Well, just get your ID real quick. Well, let's get your ID session. first and then... One task at a time here. Okay. Here, grab it. your ID for me. Uh-huh. Okay. Your ID. One task at a time. So let's do an ID and then you can dig around for your uh, paperwork. I don't know where my ID is. You see that stack right there, maybe? Okay. One second. Just check on her. So I need this. this. No, we don't need a fire while we're here. Right. Okay. Okay, so you see uh, there, they asked for her ID, and she kind of had this look of like, uh, I don't know if you could say distrust or maybe disobedience. Remember, us being in captivity, you know, this is, goes back into, this is where the, a lot of um, our people don't understand, you know, because we, we're in um, a state of captivity. So you have to obey the powers that be in regards to, to what is reasonable you know what i'm saying so if if you're ever in a situation where a cop asks for your id and you know it's there's no i see at this point right now this is how quickly things can turn left i'm and i'm going to show you how quickly things can turn left if you're in this situation and the cop asks for your id simply give them your id don't go and be trying to do something different you you anytime you are if you ever call the police always have everything present i had to call um you know if you have like a property issue damage maybe vehicle uh you know a, a vehicle theft or something like that 
you have to follow police support. So you have to call the police. They have to come by. They have to take pictures. They have to file a report. They got to give you the uh, the number so you can go to your insurance. When you know you're doing that, have everything ready, such as your ID, because that's the first thing they're going to ask. If they come by your house or they come by, they're going to ask for your ID. So this is what we have to try and teach, you know, and that because a lot of people, they're they're looking to having a reason why to try and do something to harm us. It's just the reality. And I'm going to go into other things as well, you know, after this video is over also, because there's certain things that need to be talked about all in, in as well that it's not really being talked about. And I know why it's not being talked about. And you'll know what I'm what I'm going to say. So as you see here, she had the, the pot boiling on the stove and because it was on, the police officer told her to turn it off. Now, maybe she wasn't expecting them to come in. And this is something that is so can throw everything off because see, if you are have something like cooking when they come by in this type of situation and they make you get up now they can look at you as some kind of a threat okay and the man i'm telling you this is some some of this stuff is being telegraphed to cause her to move into this direction bro and a lot of people don't understand subtlety of telegraphing behaviors in people man i, I can't we can't even go that deep into it because a lot of our people don't think that deep so i'm just gonna kind of for those who understand they understand it. for those that don't it doesn't even matter So when she picked it up, it was uh, steaming hot water and the guy went backwards. Now, let's assume that he really went backwards because he didn't understand her mental state. Remember, they called her if her mental state is kind of whatever. And like I said, we don't know her history. We don't know if she's ever been in mental mental patient we don't know exactly what they're going off of we don't know if there's paperwork to show that she is whatever whatever you know what i'm saying we don't know what the paperwork that they were referring to so again at this point people can say they're giving the you know the officers the benefit of doubt right so we see here at this point we heard her say she rebukes them in the name of jesus because they were worried about her handling the hot pot of water right and see this is what we have to talk about with our people that they still won't understand here it is our people have been genocided enslaved oppressed on every level imaginable and they're still calling on the savior of the oppressor let me tell you something your oppressor championed and pray to Jesus while he was conquering the world. That's all you need to know. While he was enslaving you and getting rich off of free labor and doing all manner of wickedness and evil that cannot even be repeated on YouTube to our people, they were calling on Jesus. So you rebuking him in the name of Jesus has no power. In fact, you gave him power because this is what a lot of our people were doing when they were being lynched. OK, but remember, this was a this was a belief system that was given to our people on the plantation. This is a this is a response to plantation Christianity, unfortunately. OK, all these so-called black churches there, they don't know how to respond to this because you are you are using the same interpretation of the Bible. In the same name of a savior that they gave you to try and combat evil when these people use that same doctrine that they gave you for you to basically stockholm syndrome yourself and to call on the same savior that they called on while they conquer you and keep you oppressed for hundreds of years half a millennia it doesn't make any sense there's no way that y'all could be playing to the same god and the same savior and he's and somehow he's working for him and he's not working for you and our people have not yet figured out when you have these conversations with our people they freaking feel some type of way 
okay or they overreact and they start trying to grab um you know go to dang uh ife or islam okay because they don't know how to handle uh the bible being interpreted the right way by by men okay because when we show them all this stuff in the bible including some of the precepts we brought out they will still sit there and just either deny or say oh it's still the white man book it's the white man book man and y'all go and in, into the freaking rock and mecca and bow down to that or y'all go to a damn grove okay or a voodoo festival or santeria or ife festival and go worship an offshoot of a canaanite deity so she rebuked him in the name of jesus and he let's see how he reacts because i'm gonna have to pause it before because you know this is you know uh too hot for tv bro i'll shoot you in the better fucking not i swear to god i'll fucking shoot you in your fucking face okay, okay. okay. So, he said, you better not rebuke me in the name of Jesus. Or I will blast you in the effing face. And that's exactly what he did after this, okay? Now, everybody's going to speculate about whether or not she tried to throw the pot, whether she had the pot in her hand. There's multiple videos. I'm not going to go into that on this, okay? About whether or not she tried, whether or not she had the pot. Um, there was steam that did fall, so she did grab, go back and grab the pot. And she tried to, I guess, either shield herself or throw it. Who knows? Again, we don't know the mental state of this woman. We don't know her history of her mental state. And that's what they could probably try and use. Because let me tell you something. These, these um, cops are very crafty. If there's any type of flaw that you have, whether it's like a past infractions with the law, convictions, uh, past, you know, mental issues they can use that as a sign of your of your inability to control yourself and probably cause harm to a public servant who which is a police officer and as you see there you know he made that threat and he felt he went through on it okay and uh, it's unfortunate that this happened to her it's very unfortunate it's something that you know when i saw it you know i you initially have to be upset of course because you hate injustice you know and then you have to kind of catch yourself and understand that this is part of how things are because this is the this is how it's been for so long and the most high set it up this way if there's evil in the city and the lord had not done it so life and death is in the hands of the most high and when he's has this under his oppressor under the oppressor as his whipping stick as his rod of correction against us there's any time that it could be levied against us okay and shown as an example of like how fragile our situation is as a people and there's these people have body cameras at this point they have body cameras and they're doing this bro like you they're the body camera ain't even stopping them from doing this stuff man okay and there's levels to what this thing is now before I get into the other part, I want to address this issue as well. This woman is 36 years old. From what I've seen, she has a son. How? Where is her husband? They, they have not talked about whether or not she's a, a, a widow. Does she have a husband? She clearly doesn't have a husband because they only talk about her being a mother. And that's it. You know, a mother, a daughter, a friend. Okay. And that's all they talk about her. They don't talk about her being a, a wife. A widow so we can basically throw that out the window that she's not a wife neither is she a widow because they would have said so okay and I've seen multiple articles multiple video they're not saying anything about her in that condition now if this woman was married remember women are very few y'all you sisters and I don't really try and give advice to sisters because you're either gonna decide to do right or do wrong and a lot of y'all are just rebellious to be honest and so the ones that aren't rebellious we don't even really got to talk to them because they know exactly what they need to do but those of y'all that are rebellious y'all ain't gonna listen anyway so this is really just talking to the ones that are um that know better and or that want to do better and also to brothers as well so you don't go crashing out trying to save some of these rebellious women if she had a husband she wouldn't have had to call the cops 
yo that's let's keep it real you know one thing with women women are very neurotic and i know this because i've been around women i've been around especially you know my mother and some of some women are more uh neurotic in than others meaning they have a sensitivity to anything they feel is negative okay so any inkling of discomfort or you know fear of something going bad they over they tend to overreact okay and so men knowing this about women this is one of the things that men do is by a man's mere presence particularly a husband it brings a level of security to where you do not start having these um emotions of like being attacked because see the thing about it is a lot of you women y'all want to be alone and I've, always, I've said it again, I'll say it again. Any of you sisters that are listening, you know, and sisters you listen, I don't really care. You know what I'm saying? Because I'm talking to people that are in the know. If you are if you call yourself a believer, okay, in Yahweh Shai, and you are not under the authority of a man, and I'm talking about you either not reporting to an elder, an, an elder brother in the faith, you're not under your father, you're not under a husband, you're not under an uncle. You're not, you need to be under a man. If you're not any, you are a witch. You are acting in rebellion. You are living in rebellion. Okay. The only woman that were, there were, I mean, a woman that's on her own, not a widow. 99 times out of 100, you're a witch. That's just what it is. Because a woman cannot operate outside of the direction of a man she can't operate righteously outside of the direction of a man she has to report to some man on earth okay I'm not dare anybody to say otherwise we'll, we'll have them re we'll have them rebuttals and clapbacks okay and we'll lay you flat like some flapjacks. So this is what it is, man. This is why this type of stuff can happen. Okay, there was a sister out there in um Louisville, even though she was uh shot by the cops, the she had her her man who we would call in the Bible her husband. They called her her boyfriend. He was in the house and he returned fire and busted back at the cops. Now, unfortunately, she ended up getting shot and you know expiring forgot her name but y'all know uh from years back out there in i believe in louisville kentucky if i'm not mistaken so men are are supposed to be your primary protectors okay now when you have a stranger especially an oppressor that you're calling to your house anything can happen you know and it's not that these happen all the time remember there's thousands upon thousands of interactions daily between civilians and police officers um and almost 99.9% .9 of them do not end in some form of violence. So it's not like it's it's happening all the time, okay? In terms of like a daily occurrence, but it's happening often enough and it's happening on camera enough that we're knowing it is a pattern and that there's some of these people are acting out something that's uh, insidious, okay? So what do I mean by that? I'm gonna show you something. I'm going to go ahead and close this. This is the police officer. Okay. And he was um, booked for, I believe, first degree murder, which, very interesting enough, if you know about law, the first degree murder is very hard to prove. You know what I'm saying? Um, it requires, like, a clear intent to to kill from a from a premeditated standpoint and you know that's gonna be hard to do in in regards to this particular situation okay so i don't know why the prosecutors i think it's just because it makes it an easy case to disprove as far as like intent he can plead to a lesser there's all kind of areas that he can go into in regards to getting out of this situation um, but it's not looking too good for him but he has some options his way and if he has a you know um a lean enough judge and a good enough defense attorney and he can pretty much get away with this now 
this guy has a myriad of tattoos and by the way this man uh for the last four years he's been in six different police agencies this is actually his sixth one since 2020 very interesting i believe all of them were in illinois and he's been on six in the last four years so this guy has a period there's something that these other uh agencies saw that they were releasing this man that they're not being too detailed about but there's be certain behavioral traits that this guy was showing that has led to him to being like this. And if you look at this right here, he has the skull. And I'm going to show this a couple of tattoos, right? He has the skull right here, okay? So look, before I go into the skull, let me go ahead and bring out this precept. This is uh, the book of Ecclesiastes chapter 5 and verse 15. Be not ignorant of anything in a great matter or small. So let's remind ourselves to not be ignorant. Um, I'm telling you, uh, brothers and some of you sisters that are, have willing ears to hear, uh, you need to pay attention to these folk tattoos, man. You need to pay attention to these people's tattoos. Okay. Many of these tattoos are visible. Some of them are not. But especially at this time of the year where um, it's warmer climate, a lot of times they're gonna their tattoos are gonna show, and, and tattoos are not um, frowned upon in modern times um, in police departments because you got to think about you know the kind of guys that they're usually getting. You're usually getting guys that are former military. Usually getting guys uh, that basically want to be out there, you know, getting at our people. Okay, so there's ulterior motives as well now let's go into this now this particular okay uh tattoo even though it people may think it's common all throughout um occultic practices particularly like left-handed spiritual practices um on different forms of idolatry the skull and bones are used very heavily okay and they do not have good intent as to why they're being placed okay now this right here the skull a dead person's head is known as a totenpoff okay it's a german word for skull now this type of um thing were used very clearly you know the heavily um what they call aryan roots i guess you can say in regards to how it's used and it's become a common symbol like it says here the word is often used to denigrate the de denote a figurative graphic or sculptural symbol common in western culture now who's are the westerners if you go back did a lesson some time ago about the westerner the colonizer you know the roman okay the edomites so this is one of their common symbols that they like to use okay and they spread it now that doesn't mean that it wasn't used by other groups other groups do also deal with that but remember those are denoting connections to demonic forces okay who wants to basically have a symbol of something dead on you unless you have something wrong with you you have to be in a particular state of mind to be sitting there being willing to sit down and get a skull tattooed on you tattoos are already considered you know sin it's already a heathen practice you know we know what the scripture says but then you go as far as putting a human skull in your head or as having this human skull symbol on your body you're going to a different realm okay uh so and we know we have people can repent from you know these type of things but just know that when you look and when you see something like that that person has a state of mind that's dealing with something else now um you have the skull and crossbones which is the two femurs which is also depicted as well okay but that's not the one on this one as you see here uh this is the german field marshal in 1914 okay this is right before world war one I. I always recommend that you uh brothers especially who want to um, understand the world we're in today you need to also look into the past always highly recommend that you look into you know the different time periods over the last 500 years it's very important for you to understand while we're at the point we are today because th this world we're in it we're not living in a vacuum okay these are uh, we are in a place that has 
the, what we're in today is due to a myriad of events that happened in time past to reach the point that we're in now and they're all connected and what the what these edomites try and do they try and make you think that it's not connected they play this whole denialism okay because this stuff was circulating on you know social media and people were talking about the tattoos and i already am familiar with some of this stuff because i've looked this stuff up years ago you know as far as like some of these um you know symbols of so-called white supremacy now it says here the human skull is an internationally used symbol of for death the defiance of death danger or the dead as well as piracy and toxicity okay it says in english the term uh totenkopf is commonly associated with 19th and 20th century german military use particularly in nazi germany okay so you now you see here they got also the symbols with pirates using it as well remember that pirates they um were living a very dangerous you know death cult lifestyle where they would have when they would go they would raid other ships they would raid uh different port cities okay um to basically steal or uh and to take property and people and this is the lifestyle that they kind of chose so they kind of knew what came with that and that's why they had that symbol because it dealt with some of the demonic activity of plundering you know remember the um the enemy only coming to you know to steal kill and destroy so there's no wonder that so many people are associated with this type of symbolism okay and it goes into the history of the use of this okay it says the skull continue to be used in the prussian brunswick armed forces until 8, 1918 and some of the stormtroopers that led the last german offensive in the western front in 1918 used skull badges okay so this is the german era version and remember it's associated with white supremacist groups in modern times now by the way even post world war ii you see here skull and bones okay because remember they were in a death cult see a lot of people they try and like go into like civil it's trying to civilize all these different things and be like oh they were modernized they were westernized you know they were they were socialists you know they were capitals they were democrats they were republic they try and go into all this stuff to freaking you know make you people that believe that get touched by those witchcraft of those words that make y'all just automatically just now there's no witchcraft involved there's no satanic activity involved it's just it's just nations fighting each other and these different no dude see they demonize who they want to demonize and then they make and they angelicize make the people the angels who they want to make angels okay and now because it's associated with oh it's just associated with just nazi germany that's it no dude deeper than that first of all this is 1919 <laughs> this in this picture but the continuation of that symbol happened during nazi germany as well okay now remember that after world war ii you have what's called neo-nazis okay and neo-nazis they continue the same things as well okay then they show in other non-german militaries this is mainly throughout europe by the way okay and then they, when they go and they colonize different areas they fight against other dark darker peoples of the earth they also bring those symbols as well and i've seen you've seen this in other things like in fact this picture is in new guinea okay look up new guinea these are australian commanders in new guinea with this again this is a death cult that they're dealing with okay and as you see it's heavily associated with your with europe isn't that interesting heavily associated with europe Okay, not that it hasn't been in other uh, groups of people. Remember, this is an ancient symbol that was used in, you know, different type of occultic behavior. All right. You see, this even Calgary pro police. So, I mean, it's consistent. Okay. So that's just some of the history of the use of that imagery now here's another one this is the picture actually of the tattoo on his hand this is during um 
that's on the, one of the body cams is able to catch the tattoo that was on the arm of this police officer. And this right here looks very sketchy. Okay, so looked it up. Come to find out it is some kind of a Viking calendar. And this is an example, you know, his is more completed, um, the, the officer, because you see it has all this stuff around it. But it is the same thing, as you can see, with the symbolism. And when you go down, this is from Reddit, by the way. When I did a search on the image, or what that was, I, it was a Norse symbol, Viking calendar. And as you see here, talks about how when you looked into it to sum it up the circular prong thing at the top is the Vigister a 19th century Christian symbol created in Iceland inspired by Norse stuff but commonly mistaken for actual older Viking iconography which again Norse Iceland is a, it's a lot of Viking activity okay uh, so that's why people say Viking anyway and then when you go further on it has the Viking age and it goes into the fact that this was also followed by neo-nazis so a lot of Nazi symbols had it as well it says using Nazi ish for a token quote makes potential white nationalist intent pretty ironic since my guy jerk effing hates Nazis and it talks about the uh, Le Latvian Thunder Cross or the Thunder God Perkon and it says unfortunately this doesn't really erase the possibility of ill intent since it was co-opted by Latvian ultra nationalist anti-Slavic anti-Semitic political movements which cropped up in the early 30s and was revised in 1995 and a lot of people don't understand they had different um they had different movements throughout the throughout europe that was associated with neo-nazism in fact ukraine has a faction the azov battalion which goes back to stefan bandera who was a nazi sympathizer in ukraine who basically felt the same way that hitler did about the small hats Okay, and he led some atrocities that were recorded in Ukraine. Now, like we said, I've talked to brothers offline and y'all know exactly some of the things I said about some of the events that occurred during World War II. So I'm not going to get onto that on this platform. Okay, but those who know, know. So what has happened is when you get into this time period, especially in the tw in what is known as the information age especially when internet forms that are coming up um and i can say this because i can remember you know you saw these different groups they have 4chan they had an actual another website there was a form that was very popular it wasn't just 4chan but there was another one i can't remember the name of it um maybe one day i might do a lesson on it but this particular website was very popular and it's I don't know if it's still around, but it was very popular around 20, 22, 23 years ago, right? When high speed internet and more people started having access to their internet, a lot of these, you know, so-called white supremacists, Edomite supremacists around the world would get together and they would share information, some of their displeasure within their own countries of what they had going on, either with the government, um, with basically immigrants coming in, you know, economic issues, different social issues with their woman, you know ways that they viewed the world and how they needed to all get together and communicate in some way so that way they can all be in this big global uh brotherhood okay and i forgot the name of the website i'm pretty sure i'll remember i might even look it up one day um but i'm pretty sure when i bring it up it'll be pretty much you know a pretty good lesson to kind of go into however one of the, one of the things that they did is they shared symbolism of their connection to one another through tattoos symbols that they would have and these people will have these symbols like on their trucks um you know in their homes you know they have tattoos of them that have certain numbers that mean certain things they'll 
it, it's so deep that I don't even think people could even understand. And to see, this thing gets so deep that if you go down that rabbit hole to try and understand it, you'll be like, dang, that's deep. So what I'm saying is this, is that in the time that we're in, it is important for you to kind of pay attention to what you're looking at and who you're dealing with and who's around you because these symbols are out here, okay? And they, they show these things, okay? But that is really for them to peep out. There's a lot of little subtle things that they do and tattooing, tattoos are one of those things where you just think it's just a sleeve tattoo, where you just think it's just, oh, this is a regular tattoo. You're not paying attention to some of the symbolism. And sometimes in this case, you want to be careful with like certain people you associate with. Okay. Especially people that live in these areas where it's just like you're outnumbered by the, by your, your own people are outnumbered and you're dealing in these places where there's a lot of them. There's certain places in the country where there's more than others, you know what I'm saying? And then you got police officers that are also involved in this stuff too. Okay. And they're involved in different death cults within these particular, you know, uh, police officer groups, these blue line, blue lives matter type groups. They have different levels of what they deal with, man. And like I said, if we go into it, it's going to be a long documentary and story. But understand this. And I've said it, you know, brothers have said this even before the police department, the police officers are an extension and a continuation of the slave patrol. OK, so once you understand that, you understand exactly what kind of things can go down. And that can include even participating in these type of, you know, police brutality acts to show your allegiance to the cause, if you get what I'm saying. Remember that the narrative that's going around is that this ass attempt assassination of you know, the former president was done by the left and there's all types of people that are feeling some type of way. So we don't know if that's even spilling over into the police department to where people may try and act out certain acts of revenge or whatever. But I don't think it would have really mattered what had happened if nothing had happened at all um, regarding to, you know, the situation, which again, I don't want to go into that, but brothers know what I've talked about it. And I may have to address it in another lesson. But that alone can tr help trigger people to that next level. So we have to be remain vigilant in this situation of uh, what's going on. So now let's go into the book of Baruch chapter three. Start at verse one. O Lord Almighty God of Israel, the soul in anguish, the troubled spirit crieth unto thee. Hear, O Lord, and have mercy, for thou art merciful and have pity upon us because we have sinned before thee for thou endurest forever and we perish utterly O Lord Almighty thou God of Israel hear now the prayers of the dead Israelites and of their children which has sinned before thee and not hearkened unto the voice of thee their God for which cause these plagues cleave unto us okay so the prayers of the dead Israelites and their children and some of those that in time past remember that though our, our ancestors before us had had certain prayers that they had before they had died and passed away and those prayers that were made even back when they were dead are still available for the most high to hear them to hearken unto them okay and i'm gonna give you an example there were prayers that were done by different kings different prophets that passed away thousands of years ago that are going that are heard for the time that we're in now to deliver us okay uh, an example of that is um that was given now this particular individual we know him to be uh the world knows him to just be solomon only but we know him to be also yahweh shai because he came back according to prophecy according to the promise made to david okay and we've went over that multiple times incl including you know um so many precepts that prove it and he made a prayer as well back in first kings chapter i believe eight where he talked about making sure you know pleading to the most high to hearken unto us hearken to the people when they're scattered okay in the strange land let's go ahead and go into that i'm gonna go into that real quick wasn't planning on but it made me think of it as i was reading okay So, we'll 
We'll start at verse 43. So 1 Kings chapter 8 and verse 43. Hear thou in heaven. This is a prayer from Solomon. I'm going into the part of it to get to the meat of it. It says, Hear thou in heaven thy dwelling place, and do according to all that the stranger calleth thee for, that all people of the earth may know thy name to fear thee, as do thy people Israel, and that they may know that this house which I have built is called by thy name. If thy people go out to battle against their enemy, whither thou hast shalt send them, and shall pray unto the Hawa toward the city which thou hast chosen, and toward the house that I have built for thy name. Then hear thou in heaven their prayer and their supplication to maintain their cause. If they sin against thee, for is no, there is no man that sinneth not, and thou be angry with them and deliver them to the enemy, so that they carry them away captives unto the land of the enemy far or near. Okay? Which is where we're at now. This is one of the prayers that was from way back then. And other uh, prophets have prayed this prayer, similar and like. Yet if they shall betink themselves in the land whither they were carried captive and repent and make supplication unto thee in the land of them that carried them captive, saying, We have sinned and have done perversely. We have committed wickedness. And so return unto thee with all their heart and with all their soul in the land of their enemies, which led them away captive and pray unto thee toward their land, which thou gavest unto their fathers, the city which thou hast chosen and the house which I have built for thy name. Then hear thou their prayer and their supplication in heaven, thy dwelling place and maintain their cause. Okay, and I, you can keep reading, but I don't want to prolong it. But that's essentially what he was referring to okay because other people made these prayers as well okay in fact even in the generations prior to baruch there were people righteous men righteous women that had made these prayers and supplication that the most high will hear them hear their children okay and plead their cause to deliver them out of their captivity because you can imagine if you're in captivity and you're a believer and you have kids that you're leaving behind. Okay, you, you're getting up there in age and you're leaving kids and grandkids behind. You're going to want to make that prayer that the Most High is going to do his will and he's going to hearken unto you to plead your cause. Because when you pass away, you, you, the Most High wants you to praise you, him, you know, you know, on earth. They tell you, as far as you know they have the saying right about the bible so believer instruction before leaving earth or something like that one of those type of acronyms right we know the whole duty of man is to fear god and keep his commandments right so that is done when you're in the body while you're living on earth Okay, meaning on the earth soil, you're standing on ground. That's what I mean. While your heart is breathing, while you got breath in you, right? So those prayers that were made while people were in that particular state where they could praise him in that condition, those prayers don't go away because those people died. So that's what it means to hearken unto those prayers, right? So because remember, one of the reasons why uh, and we have to kind of bring it up to this one of the reasons why some of us brother a lot of us brothers and sisters are able to hear and believe is because somebody somebody within our past in our lineage prayed that their future progeny after them will be able to hear and understand and believe in this time that we're in in the end of days we may not understand that this is how deep it gets we just sit here thinking that the most high just woke us up because of just us when he it could have been a a covenant that the most high made with one of your forefathers thousands of years ago one of the captivities or when we we're in the land that he would do this work in our lives and you won't even know it until you're in the kingdom. Lord willing, we're of the elect and we'll know why we were able to be chosen in these last days. 
if we be of the elect and we'll understand like wow it was such and such uh you know man or woman from our lineage that prayed this prayer while in captivity in babylon while in captivity under the romans under the greeks you know you don't even know what you who you were you don't know if you were one of those sons that was circumcised and your you and your mother were killed by were taken out by the greek under the antiochus you don't know you don't know okay or if you're one of the descendants of the men that fought during the time of, of the maccabees that fought valiantly and left behind children and prayed for the law to protect the country to protect the people okay that's what it's referring to those dead israelites and their children okay not even just those but those that have sinned okay because some of those had sinned in past and had prayed that the stuff that has happened to them can remember it some of them had sinned in the land and were carried captive and and got humbled in captivity due to the sins that came upon them that clave onto them as they are to this day right so verse 5 remember not the iniquities of our fathers but think upon thy power and thy name now at this time okay so think not upon the iniquity of our fathers forefathers why because our more recent forefathers especially and those that were in time past had iniquities that led us to the condition that we're in today that we were born in the conditions we're in today born under the condition in a strange land okay without knowledge of who our, we were um under the rulership of our oppressor who at the very top they know who we are okay leaving us in the valley of the shadow of death okay we are as zombies over here For thou art the Lord our God, and thee, O Lord, will we praise. For this cause thou hast put thy fear in our hearts, to the intent that we should call upon thy name and praise thee in our captivity. For we have called to mind all the iniquity of our forefathers that have sinned before thee. Behold, we are yet this day in our captivity, where thou hast scattered us for a reproach and a curse, and to be a subject to payments according to all the iniquities of our fathers which departed from the lord our god hear israel the commandments of life give ear to understanding understand wisdom okay so we're yet this day in our captivity okay and that was going on during the time that this was even written okay so this was relevant to them in that time and it's relevant to us today verse 10 how happeneth it, Israel, that thou art in thine enemy's land, that thou art waxen old in a strange country, that thou art defiled with the dead, that thou art counted with them that go down into the grave? Yeah, because we're pretty much, you know, marked for extermination. I mean, even the name that was given upon the, tri uh, upon the southern kingdom being called Black, in bl the black in law literally goes back to different symbolism such as death these people have set up a system where you're expected to be in the grave there are certain things that are said that are so like crazy that even people are internalizing some of this stuff to the point where we have a death culture in among our people that has been given to us by the oppressor by the enemy and our people have championed death culture to the point where they chase and chase after it they seek after it they glorify it that's how bad it's gotten verse 12 for thou hast forsaken the fountain of wisdom for if thou hast walked in the way of god thou shouldest have dwelled in peace forever Learn where is wisdom, where is strength, where is understanding, that thou mayest know also where is length of days and light, where is the light of the eyes and peace. Okay? So, 
that's what we're supposed to do in these last days so we see some of these things happening we have to have a proper perspective of what's going on because i'm telling you you know this thing is deeper than what it seems while people are just thinking it's just this random you know a uh, police officer doing this this thing could turn into a whole uh not just department but we're talking about a whole country of people and there's a lot of people don't want to believe that there's some orchestrated you know um stuff going on and i've talked about it in other lessons as well in regards to what they what the world or what people call race wars the agitation and attention is getting very very high and a lot of people are kind of get walking right into a situation that they're not going to be able to understand and by the time it happens it'll be too late because they weren't even thinking that it could even go down that way you know what i'm saying so if you think that what's going on is going to get any better you're mistaken we have to understand that this is you know part of the scenery of being in captivity unfortunately and hopefully with this we just are able to be humble put ourselves to a position of pursuing yahweh bashim yashad the right way according to the gospel and so that way we can earn everlasting life because this is something that is not just given uh, to anybody but it's given to those that believe so hopefully you know this is edifying to you brothers and sisters and again i want to give all glory and praises to our heavenly father yahweh and we do so in the name of our lord and savior yahweh shai grace and mercy be bound to the hopeful elect scattered throughout the four corners of the earth shalom